it work. So I think what I'm, how I'm going to do this is I'm going to run through the slides really quickly just to show you the possibilities. I'm changing course a tad. I'm going to run through the slides to show you the possibilities with um, corrugated plastic, and then we'll talk about its um, resources, where to get it, and how to use it. And then we'll make our thing. So let me go back to share and a tab and this thingy. Okay, so present. We're loading. Are we good? Does everybody have the assistive tech slide now, the intro slide? Yep, all good. Good, okay. So I'm gonna run through these quickly. So this is the assistive tech make and take. We have until 8.45 today, so it's a pretty short and sweet and fun um, activity that we're gonna be doing. That's my friend, Therese. This is her most recent book, uh, Make Stuff and Love People. And uh, we were talking about it when she was titling it and we shifted those words all over the place. and. Uh, make people and love stuff and she it was just a very fun um, day so she put that in the book if anybody's interested in this book please let me know and I can give you the resource for that it's available on Amazon also she put a shout out in there to me but she won't tell me where and I'm super excited to find out where but I haven't had time to read the whole thing um, and this is a previous book so she's done several books and she's really the queen of visual support so most of her books are done in the form of pictures and in the recent book, this one, every picture has a QR code that, that links to a how-to video or the resources. So it's pretty cutting edge in that respect. Um, <clears throat> so here's corrugated plastic. This is how you would probably see it. It comes um, in you know, usually lawn signs and graphic designers and um, companies are the ones that pretty much use it, print on it, and then recycle it. And uh, one of the things that we have discovered is that it, you can just, um, use it and cut it in different ways. You can cut part way, through the uh, part way through the plastic or all the way through the plastic. And you can create different bends and folds as you'll see when we make our book holder today. Um, and then with different adhesives, depending on how you put things together, either with Velcro or double-sided tape, you can make all sorts of supports for classrooms. And we used to talk about making supports for um, people with disabilities, but um, there's a kind of a fine line between what would be assistive tech and just low tech options for lots of people. So um, I'm going to give a quick, I gave a quick description of corrugated plastic. So Therese invented this device. It's called an Eileen. I'm, it's just because she leans, um, you know, equipment on it, either an iPad or a book or, um, and on here that um, tab on the right there folds up and opens in the Eileen lays flat, so you can adjust it to the heights of the slant. This one happens to hold an iPad, but there's all different kinds. Um, and then she's made several different variations and iterations of the Eileen. So um, this one's a book one. We're making this today, but a little bit smaller. Ours is, this is a 12 inch. I think we're gonna be making the 10 or eight. Uh, here's a mini one that would hold a telephone, um, a um, iPhone. And then if you turn it on its side, you can use it as a scanner or a document holder. She took one time um, sticky back foam that you can just get at Michael's or Joanne and put it over it. And it looks like a very high end um, piece of equipment. You wouldn't know that it wasn't you know, something that was purchased um, that was manufactured in marketed for this product. So um, she is not a believer in making things look really nice. She's a believer in low down and dirty and quick and get it done. Um, I have a tendency to sort of want to make things, you know, look a little bit nicer. So we talk about that a lot, but she likes the five minutes or less because that makes it accessible to everybody. Playing cards. This is, um, the, along the same lines, but if you look at the bottom of the cards, what you'll see is a thin layer of acrylic plastic, and that is called corner guard. And corner guard is where you would get it at Home Depot and you put it on the corners of walls where you might have wallpaper or paint uh, where you don't want it chipping, usually in you know offices. Um, but that's corner guard taped onto the bottom of a of an Eileen type of a holder that would make 
holding playing cards or Scrabble tiles or anything accessible for um, people who have difficulty with grasp. This is an awesome handy tool. Um, it's three-sided box with acrylic on the top. It's a scanner that scans the exact size. So that is eight, you know, the way that folds open is to eight and a half by 11. And then where she has put the little pieces of yellow on top, it sets her phone exactly to be able to um, scan a document. So, and that folds up and just, you know, sits on the bookshelf or beside her desk. I actually have one of those and use it often. Um, here she recessed a pair of adaptive scissors. So the student or person who using them could just put the paper in and slide it through with one hand and up and down with the other. And that would be for someone who doesn't have opposing thumb grasp. Um, this she just made as an interest fidget board for a um, young child. Those actually slide and spin. Those are, I forget what those little toys are called, but they have little suction cups on them, but they just slide and spin and it's an interest um, toy. And then here she took Veltex, which is a fabric that is similar to the loop side of Velcro. And she used spray adhesive on the corrugated plastic and she made a four-way divider. Believe it or not, this was before COVID and this was just, she had put them on tables in trade shows when she was uh, going around talking about assistive tech and UNH. And then she can stick whatever she wants to those Velcro boards. Here um, is a, on the left is a visual, visual support. So board maker symbols mounted onto corrugated plastic and then it's in a corrugated plastic holder. And on the right, the dots would indicate, um, this was for a cafeteria um, job for a person with low vision and uh, she used corner guard for where the sandwich belongs. And then you would cut with a knife from the pink dot to the pink dot. And then here's just some uses, some people using the different devices. So we're gonna get started um, making the portable iPad and book holder. So you'll need a pair of scissors for this. As I said in the beginning, there is a YouTube video link uh, that is, um, those directions are for if you have the Coroplast cutter. But before we get started with that, I forgot, I want to go over just how the cardboard works and just some features of the cardboard. So I'm going to stop sharing the screen now. And then, um, then we're going to go through and I'll walk you through step by step on how to um, assemble. Did I stop presenting? How to assemble the book holder that you have. Okay. So um, here's a piece of corrugated plastic, right? I'm not squiggly lines now, right? Everybody can see me. Um, and so it has, you know, just like cardboard, it has, you know, a thin layer on each side and then flutes in the middle like cardboard. So you can cut this with a box cutter and you can cut all the way through, um, or you can cut one layer and it would bend. But there's also this really cool tool called a Coro Claw. And so it's two posts coming down and blades and this or a box cutter pretty much do the same thing. This does it a little more safely if you're working with kids or if you just want um, to be able to slide through really quickly and cut something. The other thing that happens to be pretty convenient about coroplast and um, corrugated plastic is that um, you can count the flutes as opposed to making measurements. So if I know that I have six flutes on one piece, if I have six flutes on the other, they're gonna be roughly the same size. So you don't necessarily always have to measure. Um, you can, um, so if you, I'll just demonstrate, like if you run through with the coral cutter with both, so there's a little blade here and a little blade here. So if I run through both sections, it's going to cut both blades. Mine's really dull, so I have to really muscle it, but it's gonna cut both and then the plastic is just gonna be two pieces, right? But if I cut it, um, one, I'll go through it just with one, I just cut the one side. Now I have a really nice bend and hinge. So, um, anything that's, and this is pretty strong too, and you can reinforce it if you think it's going to be something you're using a lot, but to have something hinged gives you a little bit of spring action and it gives you the opportunity to, 
um, really use that to your advantage from a structural and physical um, engineering perspective. So you can go, you can go back and forth and make, you know, accordion like. Um, you can make things that fold and collapse. Um, then they things that stand up, and then this holds, you know, these if you depending on how you build your structure. If you're wanting something that supports a lot of weight, you're going to put your, you know, thinking from an engineering perspective, you would put your flutes vertically, as opposed to if you put them horizontally, you're not going to have the same structural strength. And it's, if you were working with wood, it would be similar to how you would respect the grain, right? So you would, you know, everybody knows if you take a piece of wood, you turn it on edge and you have a much stronger piece for support, as opposed to if you put it this way, it would eventually sag, right? So it has a lot of those, um, Qualities. I never knew how interesting you could and how long you could talk about a piece of <laughs> plastic cardboard. <laughs> it's just so funny because you just think it's just a simple thing, but there's actually can be a lot to it or, or very simple. And that's another thing that I just really love about it. Um, I've made quite a few things with corrugated plastic. And one of the other things that is just, um, just you should know about it is uh, if you try to use hot glue with it, 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 it will melt unless you have a low temperature hot glue. And we don't know about those fumes. They're likely toxic and not healthy. So we tend to use adhesives like tape and double-sided tape, uh, mounting, 3M makes mounting tapes. And so those work the best. And if you look at the, on the um, make and take kits that went out, there's actually three different types of tapes. And so nerding out a little bit, like, you can take a whole class on adhesives and assistive tech, like the adhesives and tapes and ways to adhere, and ways to stick things together. But another thing that happens with the coroplast is that when you do cut this, you get these pokey little corners. So um, it's, you know, it's kind of a good idea, especially with kids, but with anybody, if you just go through afterwards and just snip the corners to kind of round them off. So they're not, um, and we won't do that like, in our well maybe we will in our session today but just so you know that's probably something you're going to want to do is just after you're done with your project just go everywhere and snip the corners off because it can be a little bit uncomfortable um if you're covering it with sticky back foam that is something you know you'd make the decision ahead of time am i going to put the foam on before or after i make my device um and then you'd have to make your device and kind of you know decide that uh, so that you'd know on a regular basis if you were making several, when the best time, because obviously it's a lot easier to cover something right now and then build it. But if it's going to create too much bulk in your folds and hinges, you wouldn't be able to do it that way. So um, I think that's, I could go on and talk a little bit more about corrugated plastic, but that would be kind of weird. Um, but I do that with Therese. Therese and I do that a lot. Like, what are some of the things you can do? Um, and so I think what we'll do now is take out the uh, book holder. I'm gonna, I don't know if everybody saw in the um, flyer for today's, in, for today's session that this is the device that we'll be making today. So um, it folds to this level, okay? So there's a lip here that holds your page. And then when it opens, it just attaches this way. Okay. Um, and, my, and Therese is actually really funny. Like she will name the book holder after whatever election sign it is. So for a while she had Obamalines and Trumpalines and Bidalines, <laughs> you know, just being really silly. Um, so in her latest video, she calls it the Vitaline. So if it looks like a really weird word, that's why, because she's just calling it because she got a, a bunch of signs from the Biden campaign in New Hampshire. So, um, but what I'm going to do is just get everybody oriented. So be, before we begin today, what you're going to see is, does everybody have their, I'll, I'm going to give everybody a minute to just kind of have their thing. And maybe if you don't have it, reach out to me to get one or just tell me to stop while you get it. And the only thing you need for today's um, construction is scissors. And if you even if, yeah, you do need scissors. Okay. And so I'm not sure how my camera is going to reflect. So I'm going to use some words that, so it doesn't get confusing, but um, on this piece of cardboard, uh, there are, from 
one end to the other, you'll see um, a, one end has white mounting tape on the top and bottom. And then next over, it has uh, two pieces of Velcro. The loop side is stuck to the cardboard and the hook side is on the top. And then you have a fold that makes a teepee. And then you have a fold that makes a V and another fold. And then you have what should be on the top as you're holding this, two pieces of mounting tape. I mean, of non-skid adhesive. That's actually gonna be the bottom base. So we're holding it technically upside down right now. So the first thing you need to do is take off, not the adhesive, but take off the whole strip of loop Velcro. So unloop it, but don't take the stick, don't take the, um, don't make it sticky yet. What's the word I want? <laughs> don't take the backing off that yet, okay? And cut that in half so you have two about the same size. And if they're exact, that's great. And if they're not, that's fine too, because as long as they're close. Um, that is one thing about my friend Therese, although she's an engineer, she's a rehab engineer. She's not um, like a perfectionist when it comes to those sorts of things. So she really, um, the way she promotes assistive tech is that it's gotta be accessible for everybody and people can make their own things. So we have two pieces of Velcro. So the next thing you need to do is um, put those aside. <laughs> and then this is where the claw would come in handy because the two pieces, the piece on the end that is that has uh, mounting tape, the foam tape, we want to cut that whole thing off. The reason it's still attached is because it's just easier in shipping to keep this as one kit, but that whole thing's gonna come off. So if you have scissors, they should it should just come off with scissors. Um, I happen to have the coral claw, so I'm gonna use that. Or maybe I should try scissors to make sure you guys are gonna have too tough a time. But anyway, we want that to be one piece coming off. And it can be kind of hard to cut with scissors So you have a piece with sticky back foam. It's about three half to three quarters of an inch wide with sticky, sticky back foam on both sides. Patty? Yes. Yes. She accidentally left the meeting, Patty. I think she'll log back in. It was Sarah. Oh. It, it was me, sorry. Patty, did you want us to cut the piece that was next to the Velcro? Yes. Okay, I cut the wrong one. <laughs> That's okay, because it can stick back together. So show okay. me, Sarah, can you turn on your um, camera yeah. so I can see what you Sorry. You're this is awesome, I'm just gonna say. Sorry, I cut that piece, so I should have cut this piece. Yep, but that's okay because we're gonna, that's awesome that you did that because someone's always gonna do that. And if you're doing this, you know, with help- Leave it to people, me. Yeah, we needed a, we needed a person because um, it's really important for, and I, I, this is just a whole separate thing for me, but as a part of OT, like we ask kids to do things and they fail every, in order for them to learn, they have to fail, right? So they fail every single day. And then we don't wanna, we don't wanna fail in front of them. And it's really, like, I appreciate you sharing that, Sarah, because um, it takes courage to fail, which means it takes courage to learn because it's all a part of the process. So let me, I, I'm not sure, I'm, I'm not sure, Sarah, how we're going to, yours is fixable because eventually we were going to cut that anyway, just FYI. I'll tape it on for now. Don't even do that because I okay. think the next step is going to take care of you. Okay. Yeah. 
I was, so, scared, I was scared to cut it. I don't know if anybody else was. I'm like, am I doing it right? I know. <laughs> it is scary, right? But these are like, it could be the, the backing on the front and the back. I'm like, oh, no, I was wrong. <laughs> yeah, but what's so awesome about corrugated plastic is that we used to be trash. And so it's free. And uh, you, there's more, right? And even the tape, like if you peel it off, you know, well enough, it's, it's uh, um, reusable. So... Sarah, see if you can follow along with this part because the next step that we're going to do is if you flip it over and um, all of the black, like the Velcro is on your right hand and the um, foam non-slip strips are at your left hand and they're facing down, okay? So it might look backwards on my screen. So what you're looking at is a wide so Sarah if you can orient yours that way you're gonna you're gonna be right back on track with everybody as soon as we do this or almost on back on track as soon as we do this step um maybe <laughs> so what you're looking at is a board with um one white sticky back foam so and so peel the adhesive off of that sticky back foam and then there's going to be a fold side that's about a half inch away from it that folds naturally. And you're going to fold that and stick it down to it. So then the Velcro is up top. No, the um, non-skid is up top. Okay. And that's not going to fix yours, Sarah. So stick with me and we'll get yours back on track. Are there extra ones at Rutland Town School? There might be a couple extras in each place. It's, I don't. Know. I may go scooch down to Sean's room if that's okay. Yeah, for sure. Do that. That's what I'll do. Okay. Okay, Joy. Do you have a question? Yeah. Can you just hold that up one more time? I just want to make sure yes. I'm seeing it in the right place. Yep. So my foam is here, and I have folded this over now you see where um, it's, yes, you have it right. Barb, I was looking at Barb, I don't see Joy, wait. Yep, and Barb Pennington has it right, Barb Black okay. has it right. Hang on just a second, okay. so this is, so I took the sticky off this. Yeah. Now do I wanna fold this way? Um, the where it's gonna naturally fold the way the flute is cut. Okay. Yeah, and then stick it to it. Gotcha. Yeah, you got it. Gotcha. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's, it's so much easier to do this sort of make and take in person. So just bear with me. And if anybody's messed up with theirs, uh, definitely um, I can get you another one and we'll get it right. And then if you watch the video, that will help too. So Barb, did you have a question? Um, I just wanted to make a recommendation. Um, if some people are having a hard time seeing Patty, don't forget you can click on the little thumbtack to pin her to your screen and then she'll take up most of the screen. It'll be a lot easier to see. Thank you, Barb. If you're just looking at her in like a little tiny box, it's gonna be really hard to see. Super just helpful. A, right. a lot. <laughs> yeah, I did, I did full screen. <laughs> Good job, awesome. Joy, you still have your hand up. Do you have another question or do you um, just- No, I just forgot to put it down. Well, put your hand down. <laughs> Just kidding. Okay, so then the next step, if everybody's on track. So now what you should be looking at is, I'm just gonna describe what I have. So in my right hand, um, there's a piece that bends up and that's um, Velcro on the bottom. And in my left hand, I have a folded piece with the non-skid strips on top right now and that's a that's stuck by the other piece of foam now if i flip that around right you see how those hinges work really cool together like you had one hinge that stuck to the foam and now it's hinging the other way so i'm going to show you like if you fold every other fold right now you're going to have that okay So 
So Alyssa has it. Barb has it. Barb has it. Um, some people have their screens off. Sean, how are you doing? Did you get the TP? I'm afraid to stick it down. So <laughs> scary. It. No, your Velcro. Um, don't. Um, nothing should be sticking yet. So just. I'm, I didn't mean the, the sticky tape. The first one you told us to take off. So oh yeah, like don't that. Be scared. Be brave. Yep. So it just goes like that. Yeah. All right, got you. Do it. Got it. I'm brave. You got it. Yay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, Kelsey, do you have one? And Heather? Yay. <laughs> okay. Sean, how did yours come out? Okay, you got it. Okay. So this part, like where the long strip of Velcro hits, what you're going to do is take your other strips of Velcro. Now watch what I do with this. I'm turning it towards you. And so here is my Velcro and here's where it sticks. So where you would naturally want that Velcro to stick to, you're going to put your adhesive, mine's dark, so it's hard to see, but you're going to put your, your hook side of Velcro where that Velcro can stick. And it's best if you put it sort of towards the edge, because that's going to give you um, the most, what's the word I'm looking for? range of tilting and slanting. And you could make this Velcro um, the length of it. So I'm gonna put it on either side, maybe about a half an inch in, not super important. It's never, you're never gonna overuse this enough that it's gonna have give. And if it does, you can always get more Velcro. Okay, so I chose a dark piece and I probably shouldn't have, but do you see where I put my pieces of Velcro on? And so now when I fold it, it sticks, right? Awesome. Okay, so we're all on track. Awesome sauce. Can you show me the whole piece flat so I can just try to... You can't quite see where I'm putting it. Okay. Do you have this, Chelsea? Yeah. Okay, so put the, okay, so the part where it's um, floppy like this, if you fold yours around so that your Velcro is going to hit that bottom, yep. you want, let me see. Oh, okay. I see where you got it now. Oh, you know where it is? Okay. I can tell you easily. So where the non-skid strips are, yep. it's on the back of that. It's on the yep. opposite side of that. Got it. Thank okay, you. So, yep. Two strips like that. And then that just folds over. And so then you can see how you would have a different height. Not, not a huge difference in height, but you can get this pretty low. Um... And you can see how, too, you could really change the angle for someone by if you were to extend this board. And you can do that yourself in engineering, like if you need someone who needs a, a minor slant. I actually have one of these that I use at home for my iPad when I'm using my iPad. Um, and it's a Bernie lean, which is really cool because I'm a Bernie fan. So... <laughs> So, so there's that. So now the last thing we need to do is take the strip that we cut off in the beginning, not you, Sarah Tetzla, um, <laughs> just teasing. <laughs> yes, you have it now. And we're gonna put that on the front of here. And that's just gonna serve as the lip for whatever it is that you're gonna hold, the book or whatever it is that you're gonna hold. Super clever. <laughs> right? We're getting our stands all ready for summer reading. That's right. <laughs> Super cool. Stop the cup holder on it. I could teach you how to do that with Velcro one wrap. 
<laughs> Whole different in service. So the reason now what you're left with is um, a layer of sticky back foam. And if we had done this with a coro claw, we would have folded that in and incorporated a little bit differently. So that's why you have an extra strip of foam tape. I would just leave that on there or maybe cut off a smaller strip of coroplast from somewhere else and put it on top so you have a bigger lip on there. Yeah. But then you have your holder. All right, I didn't bring my iPad today, but I can put my phone in there. Patty, mine still works, just so you Yay! Know. <laughs> awesome. Did Sean help you with that? Yes. <laughs> That's great teamwork. I love it. Get Using your resources, going to appear. Fabulous. Sarah, that's the sign of a good leader, too. Like, A, being willing to fail in front of everybody, and B, showing um, how to be resilient and bounce back from it, and C, being so open about it. So I'm not even kidding when I tell you I super appreciate that you were brave enough to, like, say, hey, I did this wrong. So, um, so there it is. And I had something else I was just going to share that was really fun and funny, but... Oh, I know what it was. So my friend, Therese, I just want to share this. Oh, sorry. I'm a little bit scattered. You do want to go around on all the edges and just cut off those corners so they're not pokey and they don't hurt you at the beach or your pool or your living room couch or whatever. Because they do. Like if you, if you catch it, your finger on it or whatever, it really hurts. So I just want to share about my friend, Therese. This is um, kind of related it's related to assistive tech and her journey, not specific to this project. But before I do, I just want to give anybody an opportunity for any questions or comments. Can you yes, send Joy. this? Oh, sorry. I didn't raise my yes. hand. Can you send okay. this? Go ahead, Joy. I was just going to ask if the if there's a materials list with the video, because I seriously want to make one of these like for every one of my kids. Awesome. Yes, there is. And um, I will also send you the QR code from the book where you can go on. Um, and Teresa Wilkham has a YouTube video page and she's just a fun and fascinating person to watch. Uh, and I'll tell you about a little bit more about her in a minute. Um, also, I have found you have to be really careful about this, but around election time, if you put out the word either on social media or to and ask for signs, you need to be very careful because there are different kinds of election signs and you'll end up recycling everybody's stuff. Um, but um, people are usually really looking for a place to put this and to get rid of it without, it's very much um, in the sustainable efforts realm, a really good thing to be doing. So yes, there's a place. And if you can, and if it's a non-election cycle and you don't have any, um, you can buy Coroplast and it's not, terribly expensive um, and it could also be you could set it up like we did today and have the kids make it themselves and then they can personalize it with stickers and whatnot too so that's pretty cool so yes I will share that with you Alyssa yeah I was gonna ask if you could send us the link to the books that she has. oh for sure yeah yeah thank you totally and I think that's the only questions I see. So I'm just gonna share very quickly, and I, and I share this um, with full disclosure from Therese, because this is, she gives lectures and stuff, and she's very open about this, but she herself is a person with a disability who was overlooked until her 11th or 12th grade year of high school, where she happened to have written an essay on a very funny topic, but the essay was really brilliant. And the local newspaper came to her house to, you know, tell her parents that she had, this essay was for a contest and they came to her house to tell her she had won a prize. And her parents were shocked thinking that they meant a sibling or something. And it ended up that she had one teacher that um, believed in her and helped her take tests. They take the SATs and get ready for college and go to college. Um, she still has a significant reading disability and dyslexia, uh, as well as Tourette syndrome. And she is uh, a functioning adult with a PhD. She's an engineer and she has authored four or five books and she runs the entire state program. So a person, the, these are the kinds of kids that are in our schools. And if, you know, if somebody hadn't seen through the challenges that she has and if somebody hadn't helped her guide through, she 
could have very well ended up with a very different course in her life. And she's really super open about that and just, you know, like so appreciative of special educators and educators in general. And she had a gen ed teacher that helped her, but just the whole um, process of being seen and being recognized for your talents and the things that you can do as opposed to what you can't do. So I always just like to share that about her because it's an amazing story. And I think it's super inspiring to all of us that for what we do. And I appreciate all of you and the work that we do for all kids. So anyway, and that's 844. Pretty good. I was a little nervous about <laughs> never know with time, like on online make and take how that's going to go. So um, I hope it was really fun for you all. And I hope you make many and other things. And if anybody wants to get together for like a little fun um, assistive tech play time, we could do that next year at some point. Um, maybe we can do it in affinity groups or something like that. Yeah, I could see this being just like a fun thing to do to make with your students at the beginning of the year rather than making them for them. I mean, depending on your age group, I'm sure my fourth and yeah. fifth graders would love it. Absolutely. And, and you know, the other thing is show them the videos and give them the materials and see what they come up with. You know, like you, it's kind of never ending. Like you can build all sorts of things, you know. So. Great. Anybody um, has ever wants to talk about it or I'm always open. I love um, talking about assistive tech and to other educators who are interested. So definitely feel free to reach out. Um, I'm going to talk to Al about how I can get the videos and materials list out to all of you. And I'll, I'll be sure we do that. So Al, could, would you mind staying on for a minute after everybody logs off just so we can figure that out? Yeah, I'll be right here. Awesome. Thanks, okay. Thank you, everybody. Have a great summer. Too. Thank you. Thank See you, you later. Thank hey, bye. You. Hey, Patty, thanks for giving us a, a fun and service workshop. I was like, <laughs> oh, Patty's doing a, a craft project. I'm excited. <laughs> well, makers, makers unite. Yeah, it was great right. seeing you. Have a wonderful you too. summer. Have a great summer, Barb. Bye. See you. Bye. Thanks, Al.